Welcome to episode 3 of my Intro to Bevy tutorial series. Last time we got input and a tile map working, now in this tutorial we're going to add some wild encounters to our game. We are going to cover how to handle different game states in Bevy as well as more ways to query entities and how to use timers. Our code is going to start looking a little more complex, but I hope it will all make sense by the end of the episode. The first thing we need to do is add tiles to our map that can trigger encounters, like tall grass and Pokemon. We create a new component encounter spawner. This component will have more details in the future, like what kind of encounters that tile will spawn, but for now it's just a tag. We will add it to any tile created from a tilde in our map file. And finally, we need to add some grass patches to our map. Now in the player plugin file, we need to create a system to detect when the player is in the grass. This is very similar to our collision checking system, and we need a query for the transform of entities with the player component. We also want to query for tiles with our encounter spawner component and get their transform. We want to reuse the collision check function from last time, so let's modify it to not take the query, and instead just take the transform of the tile to check. Now we can make our checking a little bit fancier by using the any function on iterators in Rust to see if the player will collide with any tile. Here we need a closure to get the transform of the tile, and then we call our function to check the collision. If you are uncomfortable with this style of code, this can easily be a for loop checking each tile. Then in our encounter checking system, we can use the same idiom to see if a player has collided with any of our encounter spawning tiles. Now that we have found a collision, what do we need to do? Our combat gameplay is going to be wildly different than the overworld movement, so we'll need a whole new set of systems to handle it. Bevy handles this with a state machine system. State management in Bevy can get relatively complex if you need it to, but here let's just do the bare minimum to swap between the overworld and combat. First in main, we need to create an enum, which will define all of our states. We need to derive debug, clone, partial eek, eek, and hash for Bevy to be able to use this enum as our state, and we might as well make it copy. If you forget about any of these, Cargo will give you a warning telling you what to add, so don't worry. Then in the app builder, we will call add state and give the app our starting state. Now back in the encounter function, we can access and change the state. The state is given to us the same way as any other resource, and the type is state and it's generic over our enum. All we need to do is call state.set to change the state to combat if there's a collision. This can return an error, and by looking at the state error enum, we can see this fails if we change the state we're already in, or if we try to change the state multiple times in the same frame. We don't plan on doing either of these, so let's just throw away the error and expect it to never happen. Now that we have changed states, we need to decide which system should run in each state. We do this using system sets. In our player plugin builder, we want to call add system set and construct a system set to run only on update when we are in the overworld state. Now we add all of our systems to the set using with system instead of add system. After doing that, you'll notice we'll stop handling player movement after we touch the grass because we have changed to our combat state. We also want to hide the player sprite when we enter the combat state. We can set systems to run on entering or on exiting a state using a system set on enter or on exit. Let's create a system to hide the player. Here we want to query the visibility component of the player, which was added when we created the sprite sheet bundle. We also want to make the background of the player invisible, so we need to query for the children of the player. I'm making these two separate queries to handle the case when the player doesn't have any children, because otherwise, if the player had no children, it wouldn't match the query and it wouldn't be hidden. The final query we need will give us access to the child's visibility. In Bevy, you often need two queries to handle parents and children one to get the children, and one to get the components you want from the children. Here we set the player's visibility to false, and check if the player has children. We need to call get single because we don't want to crash if the player has no children. This gives us a result, and we can handle the result with an if let statement. Then we iterate over the children. Now we want to use the query function get mute on each child to find that child's visibility in the query, and set it to false. We need another let ok here because get mute will return an error if the child does not match our query. Now we make a show player function doing the exact same thing, but setting the visibilities to true. Finally, let's create a temporary test function to let us escape the combat state, and return to the overworld if we press space. Here we just need the keyboard input and the state resource again. Now if we run our game, we will notice a weird behavior. Once we press space, we'll infinitely loop between combat and overworld, even though we only press space once. This happens because the next state's update happens in the same frame as the transition, so the input resource is never reset. This is a common pitfall of state management, and the recommended solution is to manually clear the input after changing states. There's an open issue on Bevy's GitHub about solving this pitfall. Now we see the state only transitions once, but the player still doesn't reappear, because it's always in contact with the grass. 
To solve this, let's add a just moved flag to the player component and set it to true if the player movement was successful and non-zero. We only want to change states if the player moved during the frame. Now we see the game is behaving like we expect. Each time we move, the player disappears and combat begins. Let's do the exact same thing we did for the player to make the map also disappear and reappear. The only thing we need to add is a map component for the tile's parent so we can query for them easier. We could have also made a tile component and given it to every tile. Now let's fix the gameplay. No game has encounters spawn every frame. We want the player to walk around in the grass a little bit between every encounter. Bevy gives us a nice timekeeping component called a timer. We can use timers as a standalone component or we can nest it into our own components. I'm going to nest mine into a new component called encounter tracker, which I'll add to the player. Now on creation, we create a timer to go off every one second and we set it to repeat so we can get many encounters. We want to increment the timer whenever the player is moving and is in the grass, so let's go to our encounter checking system. We want to change the query to let us mutate our new tracker component, and we want to get the time resource again. Now here, instead of changing state, we want to take the timer by the time between frames if the player just moved and is in the grass. And when the timer finishes, we want to trigger our state transition. This is the simplest way to use timers. We set it up with a duration, tick it every frame, and check if it's just finished. Now the player wanders around in the grass for one second between each combat encounter. As a bit of cleanup, it will be helpful to be able to see timer values in the eGUI inspector. We can't derive inspectable on this component because the timer comes from Bevy and doesn't derive inspectable there. However, the eGUI gives us an alternative way to show components by deriving reflect on them. Now in our debug plugin, we can register this type. One last thing we need to do is add a reflect component attribute, and then our timer will show up in the eGUI. If we forget any of these steps, the eGUI will kindly tell us exactly what we need to add. Most things in Bevy and Rust will give you very good error messages telling you exactly what you did wrong and how you can fix them. Now let's actually make something appear on the screen during combat. First, let's create a new file and plugin called Combat Plugin, and remember to add it to our app builder. Let's move the exit component system to our new plugin. Now we can make a system to spawn an enemy. Let's use the spawn ASCII sprite function to create a lowercase b to be our placeholder for a bat enemy. We'll create a new component enemy and add it and a name to our bat. Now we want the system to be run on entering the combat state, so we use system sets on enter again. Let's also make a system to despawn the enemy on exiting combat. The despawn enemy system needs commands and a query for the enemy to remove. Here we use the special query parameter entity, which will give us the entity that matches our query. It's important to note that entity here is not a reference like any of the other query parameters. Also remember the entity type is just an ID. Now for each enemy entity, we want to call despawn recursive on commands. We use despawn recursive to handle the case where enemies have children, as that removes the entity and all of its children. Now we notice the B is a little off center in the combat state. This is because the camera is still centered on the invisible player. We want to reuse the same camera for combat, so let's make another system to center the camera and add it as an on update system for the combat state. As one final bit of polish, let's make a nice fade out effect before combat starts. I like to do this so entities aren't flash disappearing or appearing in a single frame on screen. As always, let's start by making a new file and a plugin for fade outs. This plugin will grow and get pretty complicated as we go on, because we'll want to reuse this fade out in many places in our game. Let's create a component that will handle what the next game state will be, as well as the current alpha value for the fade, and a bool to hold if we've already changed the state or not. Now let's create a system to create the fade out entity. We want commands, the next state, and our ASCII sheet as parameters. We can't use our ASCII sprite function here because we don't have a way to control the sprite size. Arguably, we need to add that, and we'll probably add it soon, but for now let's use the same block of code here. We will use index 0 as that's all white on our sheet, and we'll set the size to be massive to cover the entire game world. Now we want to spawn the sprite sheet and set the z value to 999 so it's on top of everything else in the game. We will insert a 1 second non-repeating timer here. Notice we are using the timer as a separate component instead of encapsulating it in our own component. This is just another valid way to use timers in Bevy. Finally, let's add our screen fade component in a name. Now we need a function to actually handle the fading. 
Here we want commands because we will despawn the fade when we are done with it. We want a query for our fade, and we need to mutate the sprite to be able to change its alpha, and we need the entity parameter again so we can despawn the entity. We also want to be able to change state in this function, and the time so we can take our timer. Now we loop over our query. Here we can't do single mute because most of the time there will be zero matches to the query. Next we take our timer. If the timer is less than halfway done, then we want to increase the alpha. Otherwise we'll decrease the alpha. Percent and percent left will easily tell us the state of our timer. Then we want to set the sprite alpha to our fade alpha. Next, if the timer is more than halfway done and we haven't changed states yet, then we want to set the state and mark that we have changed states. Finally, once the timer is finished, we'll despawn the fadeout entity. Now we change our two state transitions to just spawn the fadeout entity. That also means we need commands in our ASCII sheet in these systems. The game looks good now, but the player can still move as the fadeout is happening, which isn't really what we want. We can fix this by adding an active flag to the player, and not move the player if it's false. Reinitialize it to true, and we'll set it false when an encounter starts, and we'll reset it back to true when we show the player after the encounter. An interesting exercise might be to change this so the player is only active after the fadeout despawns, or is never active when the fadeout exists. In this tutorial, we covered game states, timers, and more ways to query entities and their children. Now we have something that's almost a game, where the player moves around in an overworld and can encounter enemies in patches of grass. Next time we'll flush out the combat system more and hopefully have a full game loop to show off. Also, I've started a Discord server and an invite link is in the description. Feel free to join if you want to talk about Bevy, ask any questions, or just hang out. As always, please remember to subscribe and leave any feedback in the comments below. Thank you for watching.